Hey everyone, before we get started, I wanted to pull you guys again for a uh, next deck video, what we're going to do. So today, obviously, we're covering Axel, so I want to make the options one for Force, one for Protect, just so we cover all the bases. Axel, I know there's a certain deck that I'm getting ready to play, and I do have one version of that ready, but you're, I think let's, let's show off some other kinds of gifts. Option one for our force gifts is going to be Dimension Police. I know I've talked about it a lot recently and I haven't actually shown off my builds recently, which there's at least two of them. I haven't messed around with number three. Uh, Deep Police. And number two, the only version of Meg Colony I play, Gridora. Of course, as always, we'll th go ahead and throw a Gear Chronicle out there. Haven't updated them in a couple months, so you guys want to see what's going on with them, I have not done a gear video in a little bit. I should probably keep you guys updated on that since I am a gear player. But yeah, either Dimension Police or Mega Colony or Gear Chronicle. Let me know down below, comment and stuff. Please subscribe, I'm, you know the little all spiel. And of course, shout out as always to my Patreon TCG player. Check them out for all sorts of card deals. I've recently made my 100th sale on there, so hmm, super excited about that, it's working. The funds help support channel all that fun stuff. Anyways, on to the video. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the card table where today we're finally going over the third side of this lovely mat my friend made me once again. You guys want your own custom mats. It's kind of a playset design with a couple clans on it. Check the link below. He does good work, obviously very mustache, blah, blah, blah. But uh, enough of that. Like I said, today we are finally going over third part of this mat, Pale Moon. But that means I can show off a different mat for once. Show off my freaking zero damage Psalm Vanguard. Oh, this is not gonna lie. I didn't really care for too many of his designs before, but just the attention to detail on this, the like fact that he's got the pigeon pop there, that they did the actual Luna ride. Those are you guys that. They really pay attention to G, or never really pay attention to anime. That was the character that used Harry, and they actually did her as the Avatar ride. So like, super thumbs up to that attention to detail. I love it. That's I saw that. I instantly wanted this mat. Yeah, um, you guys know Solomon. Just go get match from him. He's cool. Anyways, on to the deck itself. As always, if you guys are new here, like, comment, subscribe. I'm not gonna show at the beginning of the video, but we're showing at the beginning of the video. Here's a Harry deck. So to get started with the Harry deck, of course we have Harry himself, who we're obviously writing four copies of. So Sir Harold has two different effects. Of course he's an Axel Vanguard, which means you do run your Axel gifts in here. But all of his are a little different because, zoom in, in one place choose one of your additional rearguard circles, also known as the Axel circles and it becomes a stage until end of fights. Now what this means is that from that point on, when you ride the Harry, all your gift markers are gonna stack in the exact same circle. Say so here's your XL gift. Oh hey, you're Harry, so that's your stage now. Ride another grade three next turn, or another Harry, whatever. Get an XL gift. Oh wait, it has to go here. So basically all your gifts are just gonna keep on stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking. They're all gonna go in the same spot. For that reason, you can actually run either Axel Gift in this deck, which I'll go into a little bit once we explain the cards. But I, for a reason I'll show you later, will prefer to go Axel 1 in this. Also because I finally get to show off the cool gifts, but um, just because for the card you want to put on stage, you're going to want as much power as you can. And just so that you do have a little bit of build to draw, so you're not missing out on too much by going Axel 2. That's the first effect is that you get your stage. And then of course, all Pale Moon cards have weight cost. Cards that soul. So for him, you can pay his cost, which is discard one, counter blast one, up to two Magia dolls from your soul, which I'll go over in a second. And if your opponent's already grade three, you instead get to call up to four of them instead. In addition, all the cards you call out of soul will get a power up. So you do get to make a nice board out of him for essentially free, just counter blast one, discard one. Have a super powered Axel Sage that is basically a force marker. Go ahead and check out his dolls. Let's lay them all out real quick. Show them what the ratios are on. These are the Magia dolls. They're all worker right cards, much like the Nightmare doll cards before. I would love to make a Nightmare doll hybrid. I've been testing it out a little bit, but I think it's just 
a little bit better to do pure Harry. Once again, going back to G, you guys may recognize these as some of the old Harry support cards and or strides. That was, used to be a perfect guard. That used to be a great two that was actually part of a broken combo deck. And these two were strides. Now they're all little dolls and they're adorable. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the effects one by one. First we got Prana. She's the power-up card. Um, each of these dolls shares a skill that when you guard with them, they go back in your soul. This is a way to basically cycle and guarantee that he pops off every turn. It's a lot easier to do, obviously, with grade twos because you could intercept one strong field. They all have that same skill. And her particular skill when called out from Harry is that she and the Harry get plus 10. So a huge power-up card. On top of your other power from this, she's gonna be swinging base 29. And we got Uncle Dragon over here, who is your retire card of the deck. And when he comes out of soul, he just sucks a card into your opponent's soul. So it's instead of retiring, you're just taking a card and putting it into her soul. Really useful because it gets around a lot of retire effects, and you're not retiring it, you're not binding it, you're doing other wacky shenanigans. So that's why we only run two of him because the control isn't too important. But it is nice to have different names for Harry, and in addition, having control is never a bad thing. So it's great twos, moving on to the two grade ones. We got the Perryton and the Mirror Master. Go over this mirror first. Mirror's effects lets you counter charge one, so this gives you the engine back, and Perryton lets you draw one, so lets you draw a card. So effectively, if you're able to call these two off of Harry's skill, which is a counter blast one and discard one, draw one off this, Counter charge one off it, off this. Harry is now officially free. Of course, to get to the dolls, we have a couple different ways of doing this. First and foremost is their card dealer, Jack Dean, who has an on place ability. Counter blast one, check your top seven for up to two cards that are either Magia dolls or the next card I'm gonna show you. And add them to your hands. If you did add two, you take a card from your hand, shove it in soul. Awesome. Ask consistency, gets your dolls ready, and fills up your soul a little bit. That's super good, that's why we have to run her at four, because just the engine of the deck. And the engine of the not deck is a bird. So he has a couple skills. One's very much like Jacqueline. When he is placed, you can pay the cost, which is kind of possible. No, he's free. Um, yeah, when placed, you just take a Maggie doll from your drop zone and shove it in the soul. This is super good for the grade ones mainly, because unlike grade two, which you can intercept with, obviously, grade ones just kind of chill there, so if you're able to call a card over to grade one, put some drops in and be like, hey, put it back in soul. Guess it's ready. So that's super useful for that. But what's more important is his second skill, where after he attacks, you kind of blast one. If he's on the stage, you got to mention that he has to be on the stage. And then he returns back to your hand and you call from literally anywhere, deck, soul, or drop zone. For Mr. Big Boy Dragon. Boop, pop, pop. We run two of these. So, once again, a cool little nod to the lore of G and of Harry himself. Uh, Pop was kind of Harry's assistant, which I don't know, you can't really see him in the start. I can't really see him in the start, but usually Harry's got a little vision on him. That's Pop, this bird. And Pop is secretly this dragon. So, you have a couple strides of that turn into Pop the dragon, which is cool. He's a grade four. Oh, the lore's awesome. Yeah, um, these are the same card. And when he attacks, transforms into this. Plus Pop goes back to your hand so you can use him again later. Super good combo. The Mr. Dragon Boy himself, of course he's a grade four with no gifts or anything. That's cool, you're never gonna ride him. He's always gonna go right on your stage. And when he does that, you get another gift. Awesome. On map two gifts right there. But um, his third skill is why I say that you wanna go over um, Axel 1 instead of Axel 2, because you want the power up. Because he has zero attack, which is fine, because he gains plus 5 for every different names doll on the field. I have seen builds that don't focus on the dolls themselves and just focus on getting him out, so the more gifts you have, the better. Because once he hits 40,000 power, he gains a crit, and your opponent cannot call cards from Sentinels from their hand to block his attack. And at the end of the battle, he just goes explodey. So yeah, this is your guard restricts the deck. And there are combos with this, like with end of stage dragon, stuff like that. Once again, different builds you could try out. I think this is a little bit more consistent. Because of that, you do want to go Axel 1. This first turn he's going to be out, he'll be base 20 plus your other dolls. 
If you were able to call four out, you're gonna get your card tricked off right away. If not, that's cool, because every time he comes out, you just keep on adding more in. So it's basically just a secondary ride on top of your grade three ride. You can still go gift two to draw cards, but you just want the power off gift one. My reasoning for it. Do your own thing on that. Yeah, basically he is your combo attacker for the deck and also gives you guard or strike finisher. Super good. You only run two because you can fetch them out of everywhere and because you're never gonna ride it. So unless you have them both in damage zone for whatever reason, you're usually good. Now, our support cards for the deck. First of all, this girl who I would run at two if I had extras. That's why we have that. These are extra grade threes. Uh, Dorian, you know her, you love her. She was banned and now she's back at four. You use her just as a rear guard ability, basically. Where at the end of turn, she sucks up all your rear guards. And for every two rear guards that you put in soul this way, draw a card. Helps you draw cards at end phase and helps you reset all your grade ones. Does it to a lesser extent? Like I said, if I had extra Dorians, which I need to pick up, this would be another Dorian. But uh, just as well, Mr. Kitty Cat, when it attacks, you could soul blast one and choose another rear guard put in soul. Once again, targeting your grade ones most of the time. So you give them plus five and let you counter charge. So a secondary counter charger for a deck and another way to suck cards in that doesn't involve her. So that's super useful. Like I said, if I had a second Dorian, this would probably be a second Dorian. I do want to test those out, but it does work as well with the Chimera. Finally, because we do run techie grade threes, we of course run our grade three searcher. Same thing as everyone else. Uh, her power up skill is just calling cards out of soul, AKA what Pale Moon does. So she's always gonna be live, but yeah. You do want to guarantee your Harry at all costs just because everything draws around him. So you got to max this out and make sure you hit this right away. Pretty simple. Finally, my actual tech, outside triggers, is a lovely little Nightmare Doll that I can take out from my Nightmare Doll builds. This is Nightmare Doll Beverly, and she has a super basic skill. If a card's called the same column as her, give it plus five. Type this in here because, like I said, each of your, what you call, little Dolly Dolls, Maggie dolls are of course worker words, so they will queue off her. Let's say that comes out of Harry from skill. Places there. Uh, Harry goes off plus 10. That goes off plus 5. She goes off plus 10 plus 10. So suddenly Harry's at 10. This is at what? 16, 26, 36, 41. For literally no cost. Cool, you only get 4 attacks a turn plus, well, 5 attacks a turn, including the dragon. But they big boy attacks. That's all thanks to her, and her her, and him. Super useful, because your whole deck is dolls. I'm honestly surprised I haven't turned Nightmare Dolls on this channel before, so I'll put that back together eventually. Triggers. Real simple, just 6-6 six, six splits. 2-2 two two on the PGs. Uh, your vanilla triggers don't matter, I just like using different names to make the opponent think that I'm using multiples of each trigger. Cause I mean, there's four crits showing, I could be running 16 crits, lol. Oh, and heals, I guess I should show this. Always this one is the cute one. Do you want to run a little bit of draw power in here just to guarantee your pieces? Just because, like I said, the deck doesn't run too many ways to filter out of deck. And extra shield value is good. However, you do want a little bit of aggression and you're not running fronts because you're only getting a few attacks a turn. And I figured the crits are the best way to do that, especially with the guard restricting finisher. Always, I like doing split 2-2 two -two on, your on your sentinels. You can do whatever you want. I just feel there's some matchups where you think the 30k shield is going to do more and some matchups where an actual perfect guard will do more. So it's kind of up to you, but I like doing it that way if I'm splitting it up. Future Jared here. I just realized that I never actually gave the proper deck list in the video. I just kind of went over cards. So there's six grade threes, including what will be two Dorian once I get seconds. Uh, two dragons is grade fours. Okay, twos, we got three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, including four birds, four things that searches all the dolls and some dolls. Grade ones, we got five more dolls, two and three, four the grade three searcher, and three of my tech nightmare doll because she boosts up basically all this stuff and makes your numbers hit. Also, we got some triggers. And the correct gift, you could use either, but you go XL1 because it helps power up your dragon better. And. I think that's about it. Um, think that I said in the video a couple times, Harry gives a plus 10, it's actually a plus five. Back to the actual video. Debt is the main gist of the deck. 
Like I said, there's a couple ways you can toy around with it. Like the end of stage build that gives you more guard effect attacks. Or Nightmare Dolls, which could help you chain off more copies of Pop, I guess. This is a really weird combo that involves uh, two Pop Pigeons and a Nightmare Doll Alice that could give you, I think, eight attacks in a turn, including two or three uses of Pop Dragon. Yeah, that's the core basics of the way the Harry deck runs, that you just call the field out, suck it all back in, and make big numbers and do some couple cool things. A little basic, but I like the way it works. Magician sleeves, because magician. Anyways, as always, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to check out my store on TCG Player. We have now made over 100 sales, which is awesome. Thank you everyone that's contributed. Helps me to make improvements to the channel, helps me to make more decks and stuff and do more coaster trips. And like I've been saying recently, I'm trying to get more dedicated recording area ready and a little bit camera, better camera than just use my phone. If you guys are new here, I'm trying my best to do one video a week. I have a couple of plans ready for a couple of Vanguard videos and maybe some video game stuff. But until next time, thank you for watching. As always, Hillman girls are best girls, even though Alaska's better. Always embrace the infinite.